All right, it's happening more and more. Young people and hip injuries from athletes to everyday folks like you and me, even our own Lisa Ram. Hip problems are no longer just for those folks with, shall we say, a little more seasoning. Here with us this morning, Dr. John Hyman to tell us more. And doctor, we used to hear about grandma falling and breaking a hip or grandpa falling. It's not just for folks with a little age on them anymore. This happens more and more often, and, and we constantly hear about it. That's right. We're seeing a lot more hip problems in teenagers and adolescents and people involved in sports mm -hmm. of a high intensity level uh, earlier in life. And we're learning a lot more about the problems that come about in hips, too, so that we can help prevent people from ultimately going on to need hip replacement. Yeah, I just had a friend. He's about 46, 47, had a hip replacement from an injury he suffered in high school. Um, Lisa Rame, as we mentioned, just had her uh, replaced as well. Um, is there a reason? Are we more active than we were previously? Is that why we're seeing maybe uh, more pressure put on the joint? Well, I think part of it is that, yes, there is some increased intensity in some of the activities that uh, people mm -hmm. are engaging in, both with increased velocity and increased power, a lot more strength training and conditioning. Mm -hmm. We're also learning a lot more about them in terms of the technology that's available to identify problems earlier. It used to be that we just told people you had to live with your hip pain. We didn't really have a solution, and eventually mm -hmm. it would deteriorate and you'd need a hip replacement. But now we're able to detect things a lot earlier and make, potentially make interventions to help. Uh, for that. Okay, you brought along a little model for us. Show us the model while we talk about some of the common hip injuries. Right, so you know, the hip uh, from an orthopedic perspective is really comprised of the, the pelvic bone mm -hmm. uh, and the proximal femur or the upper part of the thigh. And it's, it's mainly if you zoom in on that you can see that there's a, a ball of the femoral head which is cartilage and then it goes mm -hmm. into a socket which is okay. also cartilage and then there's this ring of cartilage cushion around it called the labrum. And a lot of people will impact that with a, with a forced repetitive flexion or from repetitive torque and rotation from running or jumping they'll actually damage that tissue. Uh -huh. and, and we think that if we're able to identify that early we can fix it and prevent the ongoing deterioration. And that's something we're doing now with a keyhole surgery called arthroscopic surgery where we mm -hmm. insert a small camera and okay. figure that out. And take a look. Okay. So how do we avoid some of these hip injuries? Because we just saw Venus William withdraw from a tennis tournament earlier this year um, with a serious hip injury. How do we avoid it? Well, a lot of it has to do with uh, proper conditioning and preparation, warming up, stretching, and really being aware of your body and listening to your symptoms. If you start to feel discomfort, that's mm -hmm. a sign to maybe back off and modify a cross train or take a break. Mm -hmm. uh, if you push it too far, you can certainly cause damage and, and cause ongoing uh, injury. And if you do experience such, you should check with your physician to get an evaluation. Okay, so if it's not as serious as needing a replacement, um, how do you deal with hip pain? Because I would imagine rest is the key. Yes, rest is the first line of defense and sometimes over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. Okay. But if your symptoms persist for a week or two, oftentimes people seek evaluation and they'll be referred for physical therapy or specific mm -hmm. exercises with a therapist to help guide you through a healing process. And then occasionally there's injections uh, and things that are necessary also. Okay, here's our Lisa Ram um, right after her hip replacement. And there have been such amazing advances now. She told me she was up and walking the same day. There she is doing some therapy. Um, you really don't have to fear hip replacement anymore. That's right. There's minimally invasive techniques now that allow uh, patients to recover a lot more quickly and get out of the hospital back into a familiar environment around mm -hmm. loved ones at a much faster rate now. Yeah, I was shocked. My friend told me they had him up and, and, and walking the same day as well. So, yeah, a, a, a lot of medical advances have been made in this area. Doc, thanks so much for sharing. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Appreciate it.